Hey, so welcome to unit 10. We're gonna be learning about probability, and for some of you, it might be your first time learning about probability. So let's talk about it a little bit. Probability is a measure of how likely an event is going to happen. It's how often an event will happen. We wanna predict, okay? The way we really do this normally is we take the number of successes or the number of, you know, whatever we're looking for, and put it out of the total number of trials that we're doing. All right, so let's put another E in that. Number of successes. So it might be we're talking about a football team and how many times they win, and we wanna know the probability they will win. So we take the total number of games and the number of successes, in this case that would be wins, and we divide it out. Now here's what we have figured out with our probability. If something will never happen and it's impossible, then you will have no successes, and that fraction will be zero over something. Well, that's gonna equal zero when we reduce it. So an impossible event will have a probability of zero. Whereas if something always happens, that means that the number of successes is the same as the total, because it always happens. And whenever you get a number that's over itself, that ratio there, that can be reduced to one. So we have this probability scale where the lowest number is going to be zero and the highest number is one. All probabilities will fall between zero and one. So if you have an event that is, an event is something that happens and we're looking at it, and if half the time it will happen and half the time it won't, that would be equally likely, that would be right in the middle here at around 0 0.5. So let's start writing some of this stuff down. The smallest value a probability can be is zero, and this will happen when the event will never happen. But the largest value a probability can be is one. So all probabilities must be a decimal or a fraction between zero and one. Now we have some words that we can learn to help us out with this. We have the words impossible, unlikely, equally likely, likely or certain and you can look at a number line if you need some help there that's how often it would happen remember if you're towards one that means it'll happen more than it will not happen and if you're towards zero it will not happen more than it will happen so let's look at our examples here our school closes today because of snow now most schools might close and there's a very small chance of it the way that we can use some probability notation to write that is we can use a P and then no school. That represents the probability that there is no school. In fact, the rules are pretty, pretty loose. You can do a whole lot of things. We can write the probability that you, you know, fall asleep tonight. We'll just write P of sleep. All right, so when we see these P's with parentheses, we're asking what is the probability in this case uh, that there's no school, and we're assuming because of snow. Now, most schools, uh, they once in a while have a snow day, but the probability that there will be no school is actually really low, right? So it's probably not going to happen. So we say that is unlikely. How about if you get a head when you're flipping a coin? Well, that will happen exactly half the time, right? There's two outcomes. So you can either get a heads or a tails, and then a success here would be a head. So one success out of two, that would be equally likely. You get a head half the time. Okay, how about number three? You roll a number less than 10 on a six-sided number cube. Well, a six-sided number cube is just dice. Okay, we know what dice are, right? So what is the probability that you roll a number less than 10? Here's how I can write that. The probability that a number is less than 10. Well, we would call that certain because all the numbers are less than 10. So it'll always happen. Last one, your car or your parents' car. Okay, Your car will start in the morning. Well, that's probably going to happen. But not always. I mean, once in a while it doesn't start. So I would call that likely. So this is how we can describe the likelihood of an event, uh, the probability of it. So next, let's get some important definitions because we will be using these words. I want to make sure that we define them so you know everybody knows what's going on here. So the first thing, an event. If we start talking about an event, then that is an action that takes place. Could be anything. Could be the weather. Could be raining. Right? Could be the school gets closed for snow. Could be that I have pizza for lunch. Could be really anything that you want to look at. That's what an event is. An outcome. Well, an outcome is the result of some event. Okay, so if you go to lunch and the outcome could be that you get pizza. Okay, maybe you get a sandwich. I love sandwiches. 
All right, next word, likelihood. Likelihood is how often an event will occur. And lastly, the sample space. If I want to list down all possible things that can happen, then that is called the sample space. For example, if we have a coin and I toss it, there are two possible outcomes for the sample space. What can happen when you toss a coin? You can get a heads or you can get a tails. That would be the sample space because it includes everything that is possible. How about for a number cube? A number cube, they have what, six dice is what I'm talking about. So there are six outcomes for that. So the sample space would be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. So this would be the sample space for flipping a coin. This would be the sample space for rolling a die or dice. All right, those are definitions. We, we're going to use these as we move on. So I just want you to be familiar with them. How about that? Let's move on. Let's talk about theoretical versus experimental probability. Now, theoretical probability, that's in theory. Okay, this is what should happen. This describes how likely it is, how likely it is that an event will happen based on all the possible outcomes and how frequently they occur. It's what should happen, and it uses a ratio of the number of ways it should occur over the number of possible outcomes. All right, so this in theory, let's look at this problem down here, which aligns to this theoretical probability. If we roll a six-sided number cube, that's die again, 140 times, how many times should we get a four? So I want to know in this case, what is the probability of getting a four? That's how I could write that, P of four. Well, let's see. The probability of getting a four. Theoretically, there are six outcomes. So we put the total number of outcomes down there. One of them is a success, so it would be one out of six. So I like to sometimes say, all right, we have our successes up here. We have our total down here. And we know that the probability for this is going to be one out of six. We want that to equal how many, so I'll use x, right, out of 140. So out of 140 total, how many successes will we have? Here's how we can figure that out. So we take the probability and we set it equal to the ratio of successes over total. How do you solve this? Well, this is easy. We can go cross multiply, that's one way. Six times x equals 140. We can divide by six. And we will get, this is an ugly number. What do we get for this? Ah, my calculator tells me 23.3333, right? So let's write that down. So x is about 23.33. Let's use a unit here. How many times? We'll just say times. So, does that seem, let's do, let's do a little reality check here. We gotta put it in our head and see if it's realistic. Out of 140 times, I'm gonna roll a dice. 23 times should give me a four. And that is about right. Yeah, that's about right. Right, that makes sense, that's reasonable. This is called theoretical probability. Notice how 23.33, I mean, that's a decimal. That, that can't even happen in real life. I can't roll 23 point, you can't roll point three times. But remember, this is theoretical. So it's how many times it should occur. So all this means is that it's going to occur 23 times, sometimes 24, but most of the time 23. That's how often it should occur. A little bit more than 23 times. Now, if we don't have theoretical probability, then the other type we have, sometimes it's too hard to figure out that theoretical probability. So the other type we have is called experimental probability. That's based off of running an experiment or using experimental data. What that means is we've done something and collected some numbers. So roll a number cube 140 times. All right, I go out in my car and I roll the number cube. Here we go, we start off. 28 landed on a four. So in this case, the probability of getting a four based on our experimental data is 28 out of the total, which is 140. That's what our probability would equal here. So notice the difference. One involves a lot of math, but the other one is just you observe what happened. That's experimental probability. Okay, in this last example, we're going to be dealing with M&Ms. Y'all love those M&Ms, right? So Mr. Bruss was nice enough to give you a pack of M&Ms. Woohoo! And you count and record how many of each color was in the bag. What's great about this is we know this is experimental data. It's like he gave you a bag and we're going to start counting and we're going to write down all of that data. So we're going to be doing experimental probability with this here. 
Look at all these different colors. Mm -mm. What is the experimental probability that you select a red M&M? Let's do these fractions reduced, shall we? So what do we got? Experimental red. So there's eight. First thing we need to do is we need to count up the total. So how many M&Ms total are there? So we have 18 and five, that's 23, that's 30. So I say 48, there are 48 total. So let me write that down over here. The total number of M&Ms is 48. So when I wanna find the probability we select a red m and I'm gonna write that like this. The probability that we get a red m and is going to be equal to eight out of 48. Well, guess what? We like our fractions reduced around here. So we're gonna reduce that to one out of six. Easy enough, right? So the probability of getting red is one out of six. Let's do a couple more. The probability of getting a yellow. Well, that would be five out of the total, which is 48. That does not reduce. So that's easy math. Uh, what about the probability of green or brown? Well, green or brown. I can have one or the other. So these are all successes here. So I need to add them together. That is 18 successes out of, so this equals 18 out of the 48. Well, let's reduce that. So what do we get? Nine out of 24 till you put a three in it. So you get three out of eight. Please check my work and make sure I'm okay with that. So three out of eight would be the probability of getting a green or a brown. What about purple? Purple is zero. That's easy. So that would be zero out of 48, but that's just zero. So I'm just gonna write that as zero. How about the next one, not orange? Well, you got two options here. You can either add up all of the not oranges, right? I mean, that, you can do that, and that's a lot of work. Or what I like to do is a little trick. I will find the probability of getting orange, and then I will just subtract that. Because look, there are 10 oranges, right? So there's a total of 48. So 48 minus 10, that'll be easy. 48 minus 10 is 38. So I know that everything that's not an orange is 38, and that would be out of the total of 48. We have to reduce, we gotta reduce this? So that'd be what, 19 out of 24. Ooh, write it correctly, Mr. Kelly. All right, there we go. And then lastly, blue or red or green. So blue or red, that's 15. Eight plus seven is 15, or green, that's 27. So that'll be 27 out of 48 which I can take a three out, right? So I take a three and I'm gonna get a nine out of, oh, what's that, 16? That's crazy. Now, what if you want to write these probabilities as decimals? Well, that is one thing that might happen. If you remember how to convert your fraction into a decimal, let's check this out. We got a bunch of numbers here. Suppose I wanna write nine out of 16 as a decimal. Remember, that's just calculator stuff. Nine divided by 16. That is Coolio. We can write that as 0.56. And it depends on how far you want to go out. Normally, two places is okay, 0.56. So that's how we would do our probabilities with M&Ms. I think that's everything we need to know. We want to keep this video nice, short, and sweet. So if you have any questions, please hit up your teacher. This is Mr. Kelly and Kate Town. Kate Town? Remember, it's nice to be important. More important to be nice. See ya.